Hello, everyone. Dan here from the Next Issue Podcast. On today's video, we'll be doing a review for Batman Superman World's Finest number 27. This is a new book from DC Comics. Let's talk about the creative team before we get into this book. This book is written by Mark Wade with art by Dan Mora and Travis Mercer. Timer one villain colors, letters by Steve Wands, and you'll see some more covers at the end of the video. Stay tuned for that. Uh, let's talk about this issue before we get into the actual review. It is an implosion of global proportions as Mix and Batmite flee the dreaded doom might of the fifth dimension. Batman and Superman must travel to the fifth dimension to do battle within a dimension of omnipotent mayhem. All this plus the march of the Legion of Doom Mites, an absolutely adorable weapon of mass destruction in this startling second installment of the latest world's finest epic. Uh, this has been a truly unhinged event, as you could probably tell just from looking at the cover, right? Anytime we have the fifth dimensional beings involved, things are going to go bananas. Uh, it's really fun to see other versions of like the Legion of Doom uh, as these uh, fifth dimensional beings. Uh, and just I can tell that uh, Travis Mercer and Dan Mora are just having a really fun time drawing a lot of this stuff. Uh, you could just like so you know sometimes you just feel it. Uh, let's go take a look at the art so we can talk more about that. This is this is what I'm talking about in the first page. Obviously an homage to Batman the animated series, right? Uh, even even Batman Bat Batman just saying I am the might. Uh, you know, changing a, a little bit of wordplay there, uh, and then just catching up with Mister Mix the Plick, and the like I said, every version of this Legion of Doom. This is it's like Looney Tunes here with the, the world's finest. Uh, I love seeing Wonder Woman drop in. I think Dan Mora is doing just such a fun, fun job. Uh, now, we don't have much other preview art. So uh, this story is setting up to be just uh, I feel like the next issue is really going to ramp it up. There's a reveal here towards the end. Uh, that kind of feels like, OK, this is where we're going with this. Uh, so, yeah. Really, really enjoy this issue. I hope that everyone reading this can fully appreciate that sometimes comic books can just be really goofy, right? Uh, which is really interesting because Mark Wade is also writing the absolute power stuff. So, like, Mark Wade has the range to do something goofy and silly like this, uh, but still make it really cool. Uh, but also just go all the way to the other side of things and uh, give us, like, this shape defining event like you know world uh like the absolute power stuff so i'm very excited to continue the story i want to know how these um uh how these beings end up playing their role because they have such specific relationships right batmite really is the number one fan of batman and but mr mixaplex he's really not a fan of superman if anything they're you know they're rivals so like interesting that there's a juxtaposition there uh, also, Robin heavily involved here as well. So, yeah, this is just really, really fun stuff. Really beautiful art. Uh, I think both Travis Mercer um, and, and uh, Dan Mora have a similar style uh, that allows this to just really work very cohesively. So, hello everyone. Dan here from the Next Issue Podcast. On today's video, we'll be doing a review for. Nightwing 114. This is the beginning of a new arc. Uh, let's talk about the creative team before we get into this book. Written by Tom Taylor, we have Bruno Redondo, main artist on the series, coming back. Adriano Lucas on colors, letters by Wes Abbott. Uh, let's talk about a few things first. So this duo just had a an Eisner nomination happen. Not too, you know, I think last week uh, as of the recording of this video. Uh, so very excited to see where this goes. Uh, I'm a little bit sad that their run is coming to a close, but I really enjoyed what they've done with Nightwing. So just really, really looking forward to what they're going to do, really looking forward to what happens to the character uh, and then how to close out this this arc. Uh, so in this issue, uh, as Bruno Redondo and Tom Taylor reunite to tell Nightwing's greatest story yet, the culmination of heartless sabotage on Nightwing reaches its dramatic climax when Nightwing loses the ability to leap, impeding his duties to be the superhero we all know and love. Uh, so I think uh, from what you saw on the cover, Nightwing has to go 
find himself, find that ability, find what that find that piece of him that Harless has taken from him. In the meanwhile, Harless is definitely making moves. Uh, now I've talked about how Harless is not my favorite villain uh, for Nightwing. Um, I think he's an interesting character, uh, and I hope that this arc really kind of solidifies his his place in this mythology. Uh, also, I love that. We are not only following Nightwing, but a lot of this is really uh, what Dick Grayson is doing for Blue Haven and how he's changing the city, right, uh, with, uh, with the money that uh, Alfred left him. So really, really fun stuff. Uh, let's check out some of the preview art. I love Bruno Redondo, and I just think that just even a shot like this where there's not a lot going on, I like that it looks like, you know, Dick's still looking for that <sighs> – not only to find himself, but that action of leaping, which has been so important and iconic towards, like, it's really the, you know, a central theme in, in this whole story. Um, and then we get a little flashback, too, to Haley Circus, where things began. We get to see uh, Bat Bite uh, uh, come in, and, you know, like, Grayson's never alone, and we get to see that all throughout the issue. Uh, and, of course, just... I really love the way Bruno Redondo and the, the art team work here. Adriana Lucas's colors, just they really add something to it. I love the little the little dots. Uh, I think they're called Band-Aid dots. And just all that little detail that really makes this feel very interesting. There's a lot of motion in these panels. Uh, you know, I, I love, I think Bruno Redondo's layouts, uh, they use a lot of symmetry because something like that, it's important to a hero like Nightwing, right? There's a lot of symmetry and a lot of um, evenness that has to be achieved. So I don't know. I really, really like where this is going, and I'm very excited to see how this is going to play out. So hello, everyone. They're here from the Next Tissue Podcast. On today's video, we'll be doing a review for Justice League versus Godzilla versus Kong, issue number seven. The finale of this miniseries. Let's talk about the creative team before we get into this book. This is written by Brian Buccellato with art by Kristen Deuce and Tom Derenick. Luis Guerrero on colors. Letters by Richard Starkings and uh, Tyler Smith. Uh, so I will say just based off on these credits, uh, I really enjoy the series so far, but you can tell that just based on having multiple artists and uh, multiple letters even, uh, there was probably some kind of rush to get this issue out. Um, it doesn't fully affect the uh, the story for me. I think that really kind of all comes together. Uh, but you can definitely notice, right, when you have multiple artists on a book, like, I really wish that sometimes, pe like, these companies would allow the complete time to be done so that we would have... Uh, I I like having one artist on the book unless that the story calls for multiple artists, right? Um, I think filling artists are an important part of the industry, but it's still not my, like, I would still rather just have one artist complete the work. Um, so I, I just that uh, evenness, like, it, sometimes artists interpret the script in different manners, and I'm sure they have meetings and the editors are providing feedback, but even then, it's still not that cohesive idea that we've been following throughout the main series so uh and with that being said in this issue uh we have the final conclusion here two worlds face off annihilation in an all-out war between the dcu and the legendary monsterverse with the help of godzilla and kong can the justice league win a battle against a reformed mecha godzilla a new and even more deadly hybrid titan a product of two worlds the likes of which neither universe has ever seen so, yeah, when we left off, uh, things were pretty dire overall. Uh, Mecha Godzilla, piloted by Luthor and, and, and the Legion of Doom, um, were in an all out attack. Godzilla had been captured at the bottom of the ocean to stop him from <clears throat> going on more of a rampage. Superman was out of commission. Uh, and then Guy Gardner had just died. Uh, now, I had a theory in the, in the, obviously, in the last video. Uh, which came to fruition here. So we'll talk about that in a second. Uh, but let's pull up some of the preview art here. There's a lot happening here, uh, which is completely understandable why you would need multiple artists. Uh, now, I'm not familiar with either one of their work to tell you which pages are which. Uh, but here we see, first of all, 
great recap, right? Everything I just said, it's on the screens here that, that Lois is, is checking out. Uh, and then we see that Superman, he wasn't missing from the last episode. He was actually, oh, the last issue, he was just going to the sun to get recharged, which makes perfect sense. That's how he gets, uh, you know, his powers, how he gets them back in, in check. Um, we get this really cool spread of the all-out fight. We have Batman and his big mech that he built, Mecha Godzilla. We have all the Titans. And of course, the heroes, like, this is a really, really cool shot. I actually really love this uh, double spread. And I'll go back here because um, I think I skipped this one. Uh, we do catch up with Superman and Lois, and the, he finally asked her to marry him. That's where we started with this, and that, and, and it finally happens, which is a very nice moment. So I like that Buccellato and the team are still fine. Uh, a few panels in between all this chaos to give us a little bit of the heart of these superheroes. So really great stuff. Um, but yeah, man, watching that big all out fight, I'm going to pull up the panel again because it's really great. Watching all this again, and I love, as you can see, that Green Lantern ring is just floating around, right? Uh, now, like I mentioned in the last issue, or in the yeah, in the last issue of the video, uh, and spoilers, uh, but you've seen the cover, right? Kong is one of the covers that he's wearing a Green Lantern ring. Let me pull that up. So, like, I we knew this was going to happen. We knew that Guy Gardner died because of a very specific reason. So, um, very exciting stuff. Uh, I like the way everything closed out. Now, did we tie up all the loose ends? I don't think so. I think that some doors were open that maybe we never got back to address them. Uh, but overall, still a, an incredibly fun story. Like, this is, like, some of the stuff that I love in, in uh, superhero comics, which sometimes are just big, bombastic, and maybe they don't make sense all the way. Uh, but you get those really cool moments. Uh, you know, you get to see Kong, Godzilla working with the Justice League. You get to see all these Titans. You get to see Batman in a mech suit fight Mecha Godzilla. Like, I don't know what else you could ask for in a comic book. So... Hello everyone, Dan here from the Next Issue Podcast. On today's video, I'll be doing a review for Wonder Woman number nine. This is a new book from DC Comics. Let's take a look at the creative team before we get into this book. Uh, Sacrifice Part 2 is written by Tom King, with art by Daniel Sampier, Tommy Moray on colors, letters by Clint Cowles. You'll also see uh, more covers at the end of the video. Um, and we also have a backup story here by Tom King and Bella Ortega. Uh, so keep that in mind that we continue to just get these little snippets of the world's finest story, which is uh, Damien and an older and John and Damien as they're older, taking care of Lizzie uh, as she kind of ages. So, uh, you know, the the, the new Trinity. Uh, so they, they I love that they're working together. Actually, Belen Ortega and Tom King uh, were both nominated for best short story. Um and which is fantastic for an Eisner. So congrats to both of them. Very well deserved. Uh, so let's take a look. Uh, let's talk about this issue in particular. Uh, in this issue, reunited with Steve Trevor, the ultimate test as the sovereign's grip on Wonder Woman psyche titans, she retreats into the arms of Steve Trevor. With their love of the ages, proved victorious over the web of Amazon lies weaved in man's world. Um, I mean, listen... Tom King and Daniel St. Pierre are finding a way to uh, give this story not only a lot of heart, but just show you some beautiful moments between Steve and, and Diana. Um, all this while the frame of Diana is still captured by the sovereign, right? She's still, she's a prisoner. So she has kind of escaped into her own mind uh, to regroup and and lean on the person that she most believes can help her in this case being steve trevor so uh let's take a look at some of the art because sam pierre is working on just a different level here uh, a beautiful rendition of these characters uh just the settings that are chosen for this to happen the conversation i think tom king to me writes very uh charming and heartfelt dialogue when it, it's especially when it comes to a, a couple uh, well, which is, you know, if you've seen it from other other things, like when he did the double date uh, issue on uh, uh, on the Batman series and stuff like that, uh, you know, seeing the relationship between Big Barda and Mister Miracle. So, yeah, and then you also have these like action packed. Not everything in the 
not everything that's going on with Steve, like, is going to be peaceful moments, right? Sometimes they're just out there kicking ass, and you get to see Diana fight this giant demon. Uh, you get to see Diana taking care of her kangaroo. Like, just all throughout this, Tom King and the team, all throughout this, Tom King and the, and the team are giving you little bits of lore in in the art while still progressing the story forward now that to me just it's it's so much fun as a reader uh to see all those little easter eggs to see how the story's been progressing so really enjoying this this is probably one of the best ongoings over at dc uh and they get to they get to not only have a really great uh story you also have the beautiful backup story by uh ortega and king uh, and then the, Diana and Wonder Woman, they get some of the most, like, just the coolest variants that you can see. So you'll see those at the end of the video. So, yeah, top notch, this book. Uh, I haven't read everything very, very close to the top of my, uh, you know, my top pick for the week. So I'll let you guys know how that plays out. <music> Hello, everyone. Daniel here from the Next Issue Podcast. On today's video, we'll be doing a review for Superman number 14. This is a new book from DC Comics. Let's take a look at the creative team before we get into this book. This is written by Joshua Williamson with art by Rafa Sandoval and Miguel Mendoca. Uh, Alejandro Sanchez on colors, letters by Ariana Meher. This is Hazel Brainiac, part four, The Last Sons. As you can see, this is the main event. So let me give you a quick synopsis before we get into the review. Ding, ding, ding. Superman and Lobo fight. The partnership was shaky at best, but now it's exploded. Lobo has betrayed Superman, and it's on now. Even if they stop punching each other long enough to save the day, it's too late because Brainiac has what he needs, and the Brainiac Queen is alive. What are the implications of all that? Now, of course, you've been seeing this story go back and forth between this and Action Comics, uh, which I think is a great use of the superman books to kind of keep them together now this superman series has been focused more on kal-el while the action comic series focuses of course on what uh, superman is doing but also what the rest of the super family is doing what they're dealing with how they're dealing with brainiac so i like that crossover i like to see that the books have a focus in a, a very specific way that the story is being told and of course what other fight would you want to see rather than Lobo versus Superman? It's going to be an all-out brawl. These two, I don't know how they work together for as long as they did. They worked together for about three issues. Three and a half if you count that uh, House of Brainiac 2.5 special. Uh, so let's take a look at some of the art. Now, I can't tell you which artist is doing which pages, but holy shit. Like, just... I would love to see this with this image without all the dressing, like without the extra panels and the letters and all the credits, just because I think they went all out with this. Like, just fantastic, right? Superman wearing his armor, Lobo the main man, just as always, pretty badass. Uh, and yeah, here you get to see just both of them go all out. You get two big spread pages, like, of just punching each, like these, these people punching each other. And sometimes that's what you need in superhero comics. Uh, so yeah, all the preview art is just them kind of kicking each other's ass, uh, but it's really, really well done. So now on top of all the punches and, and all that we get like Brainiac is, is finally getting what he's looking for. Now, do we fully understand what that is? Maybe not. Maybe we'll need one more issue to really determine that. Also, how does this play into absolute power that we read from the free comic book day preview? Uh, so very interesting stuff. These stories kind of coalescing and coming in together. Uh, we also have some fantastic variants at the end of the video. Stay tuned for that. So if you have read this book, let me know what you thought about it down in the comments. As always, thank you for watching, everyone. Remember to share, like, subscribe, hit the bell so you know when we go live. That is most Saturdays, 10 a.m. Central Standard Time. Stay tuned. We have more comic reviews, trailer reactions, TV recaps, all that fun stuff here in the channel. Thanks for watching, everyone. Bye-bye.